Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well, today another treat. We've had Matchbox March, we've had 50 years of Matchbox, we had Matchbox May. How about Matchbox June? I don't care. <laughs> now today we've got a, a really nice Matchbox which I've never seen before, so it's not all we've done before. Um, this has been very kindly loaned to us by Gary Hyder from London, who is a regular subscriber and regular um, participant in the live chat. So thanks very much, Gary. Uh, especially when it being something I've never seen before, it's uh, it's quite interesting. Now the thing that strikes me, first of all, it's the Red Rage kits. It's one of the, you know, it's not just you've been promoted with your pocket money in the 70s, 79 kit. This one, so it's one of the later ones. Uh, whilst Matchbox was still doing well before they went their terminal decline sadly in the early 80s. Um, so it's one of the sort of more expensive kits like the Phantom or the Wellington or the Heinkel 111 and the Mitchell etc. It's a red range kit so this is as I say you've not just been promoted you've been super promoted it's like you've passed your 11 plus so you get the prowler you get the ultimate prize this is you know obviously the worthy the, the green range the big measure smith 109 and spitfires and uh, lysander but this apart from your birthday or christmas this is probably as good as it's going to get um now interesting couple of comments first of all we've got a lovely roy huxley uh artwork on the front i'm just going to zoom in on this and just have a comment here something struck me immediately i've never seen it before at all um i think this is the first I could be wrong, but I think this is the first issue, the first version of the kit. But look at the way that they've cropped it. It's very odd because it's definitely Roy Huxley's name on the bottom. There's no description that used to get in right up to the early, mid, mid late 70s. It used to be saying, you know, Prower leaves the USS Nimitz to blast off on an interdiction mission, you know, to block an enemy radar with their jamming systems on an exercise, blah, blah. Nothing, no writing, no explanation or anything, which is a bit of a shame. So that's something that they obviously sort of left, let go in the very late 70s, sort of 70. They were still doing it in 78, but it seems that in 79 they dropped it. But look at the way it's cropped, as you mean, so you don't see my mug. Look at the cropping of this. Um, I think it's rather strange, frankly. It's as though they've, they've zoomed in and cropped right up to the actual nose here. It actually goes round the corner of the box, which is very... This is nothing to do with Roy Huxley, because I've seen his original artwork for this, and it's much bigger than this. They've just put this forced perspective on the box, and of course it's got the white, the white top, so you know that this is the later design anyway, in terms of the conceptualisation of the boxes. And I think that's a little bit of a shame. Uh, I don't worry, I'm not going to mark the kit down for this. It's just what Matchbox were doing at the time with all their kits. They started to... You know, no doubt he'll have had Tomcats or Prowess or, um, um, what's the other one, the um, Intruder, which the Prowler is based on, flying past in the back. No, they, they just remove that and put white for no reason. So you end up with this big patch of nothing, which is a waste of, you know, Roy, Roy Huxley, a waste of his art and his talent. Don't stand with it. And they've definitely zoomed it in and cropped it, so you've only seen half of the wing. Why have they done that? They did some strange things, didn't they? They started to muck about. I've talked about this on my video about um, Paul Hunter, one of our other subscribers and supporters. He sent us his Matchbox catalogs. And you could see they were doing it then. They were cropping in and messing about with the artwork and ruining it all. And I'm sure it drove him crazy. He probably, he probably looked at that and thought, well, I did this beautiful p picture, you know. And everybody says about how he was very clever at matching it to the format. Uh, of the size and he would put elements in to fill not overcrowd it just fill so there's something in every sort of corner of the, the segments of the actual image and perfect for where the matchbox logo would go well they've just wrecked that with this and it's not just this kit they were doing it with quite a few uh, it's just messed up isn't it it's totally zoomed in it's like you've zoomed your camera in too much when you're taking a, a video or something and you think ah oh, i've cropped it too much i've shot I did. I had a photo of the Concorde in my recent slideshow, and it wasn't my fault actually. I had the full image, but when you put it on the slideshow, it cropped the nose and the tail off, and that's what's happened here, really. Not not quite as badly as the Concorde was, but yeah, just a bit of a moan. It's nothing to do with this kit. It's just matchbox. It's like they put the accountants in charge and they're meddling around and trying to make it look. So it looks too big. It's sort of a bit in your face, you know. On the side, though, there there's a nice image, and I'm sure this is one of the other ones that. 
that Roy Huxley did for them. He obviously did a couple of uh, a couple of images. Now that one looks okay. Uh, at least you can see the whole aircraft now, which is good. Um, here we've got it's PK410, of course, not to be confused with the Messerschmitt 410. Um, on the side we've got one of these. Um, this is when I start to. Uh, I, I never liked the way they did this on the later ones. Where they did this rather stylized, uh, almost cartoonish artwork. It sort of just feels a bit dumbed down. But you see that it's 79 Lesney products, so it's original Matchbox in the original form. And then on the side, this I do like actually, where they actually show it in the colours that come in the kit. And I've got to say that. The colours they've chosen for this one seem to suit it quite well, I think. So, yeah, that's probably going to be one of the better ones, I think. So, the cra the Prowler, of course. Um, we'll talk about this because there'll be some there'll be some data, I'm sure. See what I mean about it? You know, it's almost like it's wrapped around the box and they've just zoomed in way too much and spoiled that lovely picture. Um, the Prowler was this, um, basically it's like a radar jamming system, like a wild weasel for the Navy. Um, and I say it's developed from the Intruder Strike Bomber, which would also be on the USS Nimitz. So this goes very nicely with your um, uh, Matchbox Tomcat, actually. <laughs> Although I don't think it's got a Nimitz, not on that one. It's the Tamiya one that comes with the Nimitz colourings, because the Nimitz was the carrier that was featured in the Final Countdown movie, which I've talked about in one of my other videos, if you want to go and have a look at that. Um, very interesting film well before Top Gun came out, seven or eight years I think. Anyway, let's move on. Let's have a look at the back. Now on the back, slightly worrying actually, it's got some Chinese writing here. Um, this is obviously when they were, I think they were already in talks with the Chinese because I don't understand, don't think they were actually moulding these in China at the time, in 79, no. But there was clearly some discussions already going on that Lesney must have been in a bit of trouble. Because I think that that's more, got more to do with that than it has to do with just Chinese market. But anyway, let's have a look. I have to say, they've made it very big and bold. These sort of uh, showing the schemes and the colour callouts and the decals. I think they've done that really well, actually. I think that's um, using the space on the box better, in a better way than they've done on the front, certainly. And I think it's really big, bold and clear, and I like it. So you've got three choices here. You've got the VAQ, the Zappers on HMS, HMS, sorry, sorry, oh, that was a bit of a faux pas. <coughs> sorry my American cousins, I'm very sorry, that was just a slip of the tongue. A Freudian slip, as we call it. USS Nimitz, get it right, oops. <laughs> USS Nimitz, which of course is a Nimitz class nuclear power carrier. Uh, USS Constellation. And then we've got USS Ranger, which I'm not as familiar with. I think they're all Nimitz class, aren't they? I think so. Um, and that's in 75 for the Ranger, 77 for the Constellation. They're all Pacific Fleet, um, apart from Nimitz, which is USS Atlantic Fleet in 75, interestingly. Interesting that, because of course, in the final countdown movie, it was in the uh, Pacific then, because it was coming out of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Anyway, let's not get bogged down with that. Let's have a look at uh, Gary's lovely model. Just wondering which way to open it from. Now, just a uh, quick word to Gary. Um, he beautifully packed this. He was very, very careful. And all the sprues were packed in bubble wrap uh, to protect them, which is a great idea. Several parts are off the sprues. Both the, I presume, I'm sure you know this already, but the fuselage halves were off. Yeah, because he wrapped them separately, he did know. And there's just one or two odd items that seem to be off. And on the clear, uh, which he'd wrapped, again, very well. And when I carefully unpicked that, there was the miss there was missing part in the middle. And I thought, oh my God, there's a part missing. It wasn't, it was just in further in the bubble wrap. So, don't know if that happened in transit or, or whether it was already like that, but uh, only he would know. Really. Now, I have to be very careful, because these boxes are notorious for... They're very effective, but they can easily rip, so you've got to be very gentle with them. It's a bit of a knack. That's the best way, to just flick it out, rather than pull the trip. Right then, so here we go, Matchbox. <sighs> Something I haven't seen before, it's going to be very interesting. As I say, these were very, very carefully, and will be very carefully, repacked in bubble wrap. So I shall reverse the process. We've got a beautiful stand there on the big ones. Come to that in a second. 
Uh, this is the clear one I mentioned when it's got the missing part in the middle but don't worry it isn't actually missing. We have it here. So if I just gently shake it, there it is. It's the windscreen in fact, it's the windscreen. Um, hmm, it's a shame that's come off isn't it, but never mind. So there we go, let's put that to the side and let us see what we have. So we've got a white sprue and we have a pale grey and then this sort of pussy brown colour. We have a part off there, I'm not sure what it is. I think we'll do the instructions first. I'll come to all this in due course. I've got a good feeling about this one. It looks really nice. It's a shame about that. I know I'm moaning on about it, but they really have. I've got such a lovely picture there, and they've really sort of spoiled it by cramming it in and they it's like stretched it into the to just completely fill the box instead of just pulling back just just 10, 15, 20% would have been enough. That's what they did. Now then, right up, here we go. First of all, let me um, show you some decals here somewhere. There they are. Well, let's look at the decals first, actually, because they're always a bit delicate on Matchbox, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful here. Oh, they seem smaller than I imagined for some reason. But they look, they look actually, for 1979, those are in decent shape. Now, I'm not, because it's garage property, I'm not going to pull it off but I will just peel back what's actually not connected just to see what condition they're in. They're, they're very susceptible to damp and I don't mean damp damp I mean they just they're like a sponge they just suck the moisture out of any room and, and start to wrinkle and they have done that a little bit. I think that with very gentle handling if you were to do what I'm doing put some gloves on and remove that so slowly just take your time I think those would be fine actually I think they're still in reasonably good nick. Um, yeah, I think they're going to be all right. You just need to be patient. And don't. If you do that, it'll leave some of the tissue behind on the top of the surface of the decal and they'll be ruined. But the nice, uh, very colourful decal design. Look at this. You've got these three different variants. Uh, we've got the sea dragons. And you've got what looks like some sort of sea scorpion here. Look at that. Um, and yeah, USS Constellation, USS Ranger, USS Nimitz, all very clear, nice, and I don't think in too bad condition. I think those are recoverable, those. I've seen much worse. Now then, here we have the instructions. Um, what have we got? The Prowler, the EA6B, is a four-place derivative. Four place. What do they mean by four place? Anyway, a four place derivative of the A6 Intruder medium bomber with the fuselage lengthened by 54 inches. Okay. And using the more powerful Pratt & Whitney J52P 408 turbojet engines. Each one developing 11,000 pounds worth of thrust. Wow. Primary mission of these, these are electronic warfare aircraft and the idea is to screen the strike force machines from enemy radar tracking missiles by using high powered jammers to disrupt radar and radio equipment of the enemy. Four jamming pods are usually carried together with an external fuel tank. So those are the jamming pods under the wings uh, that we see in the illustration. Uh, I was thinking they're fuel tanks actually but they're not clearly. That's the jamming pods themselves. And they've got a propeller on the front so they must be using it like a generator. Um, just like a, a ram air turbine to, to power them independently. Quite a good idea really. Because uh, obviously the performance and drag is not critical on an aircraft like this. It says, apart from the complex electrical equipment the Prowler has a strengthened airframe is fitted with leading edge slats which are not on the intruder are they? And other aerodynamic features to provide a short field handling capability. The basic Prowler aircraft began operations with the Navy in 1971. But many improved versions have been delivered by 1975. These machines are also used by the US Marine Corps squadrons. The aircraft will be a crucial link in the Navy's first line of defence throughout the 1980s, which they're talking about in the future tense. <laughs> okay, because this is 79, you know. So there we go. So, what have we got? Well, I can tell you first of all that one thing that is not present here which is a bit disappointing. Bear in mind this is the later sort of generation of uh, true matchbox. 
there's no small parts paint guide at all. There's nothing on the box. There's nothing here. I wonder if there was a separate one. Oh, I'm wrong. Hang on. I'm screaming before I'm hurt. They've, they've put it very strangely, crammed it down below here. Let's just look at that actually. Be careful with this. Any creases that shouldn't be there in it. There we go. There we go. It's okay. Don't, Gary's probably covering his eyes. <laughs> Don't worry. It's fine. Let's just look at it like this. Here we go. So this it doesn't but it doesn't say colour your colour plan or paint guide, if you want they used to call it. Here it is. Putting it in a very odd place at the right at the end of the instructions. Um, cut transfers and for your water slide transfers as they call them, not decals. And then you've got the pilot here, cockpit interior, arrestor hook, uh, engine intakes, and then you've got your folding wing, because it has the I think you can have them folded or straight actually. And you get your exit pipe here for your uh, exhausts, um, instrument panel. Um, is that the instrument panel? Yeah, two, so the rear instrument panel and the front instrument panel. Obviously, the rear one is the guy. Uh, yes, it's, it's unusual, isn't it? Because do they sit side by side? Does it take four crew? This? It doesn't, does it actually say that? I just wonder what it says at the beginning. I didn't read that part. It doesn't tell you, but I think it takes a crew of four. I think they sit side by side, two by two, in tandem and side by side. So it's got, obviously you've got, I think you've got like a multiple wizzo situation, uh, where the, one, one sits and does the jamming, one does the radar, one does the flying, and one does the navigation, I guess, or similar. Anyway, it's just your small parts. You've got your undercarriage here, uh, your wheels, uh, main gear, and... Uh, front nose wheel and then you've got pito heads and things etc very good so they have put it but it would have been helpful to put colour plan there so it catches your eye this is this is when they started to sort of go a bit off uh, a bit off message a little bit of a matchbox that needs some odd things and then they went all Chinese of course two years later anyway let's just get back to the instructions so here we've got the two, is it showing them side by side? I was right, it is, it is a crew of four, you can see them here. One, two, three, four, where are the guys? Yeah, four men, definitely four. So you've got like a double cockpit assembly here. Uh, front one and then the rear one. There's the number one and then number two. Um, typical generic matchbox pilots, which are actually very good in fairness for the, for the day. Then we've got your um, these twin cockpit uh, areas are being put into the fuselage, and you've been putting in your twin instrument panels we just spoke about. The rest of the hook goes in, which you don't glue because it, it's removable. Tail planes going on there. Obviously, you've, you've put your two fuselage sides together here. Then you've got this double cockpit uh, canopy, and then the windscreen, which is the part that's off the sprue. You've got a pitot head here. Is it a refueling? That's a refueling uh, nozzle. Um, because they used the intruders as refuelers as well, didn't they? These, these are Hawkeye. No, Hawkeye's the uh, radar plane, isn't it? Surveillance plane. Um, I'm pretty sure there were uh, some prowlers, I think, and some intruders were definitely modified and were used as tankers. Anyway, you've got quite a complex system here for. Um, I was just showing you here how your canopies should look once they're in place. And then you're building up your... Uh, oh, that's the part that fell off. The sprue. Now I know what it is. It's the actual hinge for the folded wings. That's what we're looking at there. It's got some nice detail at the end. We'll come to that shortly. So you've got the option of folding them or having them straight. So you have them straight there or you fold them here. Optional. No problem at all. So it's straight here. And you've got an inboard wing top and bottom, outboard wing, top and bottom, quite a lot of seams here, uh, join lines, and that's what it looked like when it's folded, so it's quite good. Then we've got your, well, almost like a conformal fuel tank, aren't they? But it's, it's going to be the actual engines, I guess, in reality here. Um, it's just, it reminds me of CFTs on an F-15, though. <laughs> 
and, uh, and then you've got your engine exits and then you're going to put your uh, engine intakes on a little bit later. Nose gear leg, main gear, yes here's the actual engine intakes uh, plus they've got a um, uh, what do you call it, a uh, feeder plate, deflector plate for aerodynamics and then you've got your pylons here for your countermeasures system and here it is uh, ECM pods with their little propeller on the front which drives like a ram air turbine to power them and then you've got different layouts here, you've got the zappers uh, you've got the, that's on the Nimitz, so you've got the Scorpions that was the Constellation and you've got the Ranger the different, different loadouts, that one's got more fuel tanks very straightforward stuff really isn't it, to be honest um, it's, it all seems very easy to follow um, unlike the later ones when they go, as I say, they go shiny. Um, I just <laughs> draw your attention to this one thing I, I skipped over and missed. Uh, it just occurred to me then, I thought, is there anything to tell you that you need some nose weight on this, otherwise it's going to be a tail sitter? Well, in their usual, slightly vague way, Matchbox used to do, they just have this arrow here. That means you need to fill that with basically plasticine or a bit of lead or something. And if you don't, you'll end up like my Airfix 148 scale Buccaneer with a bit of a disaster. <laughs> I had to put the plasticine in the engine intakes to <laughs> after fit, you know, after I finished it and I glued it all up. Mm. We all do these things, don't we? Silly mistakes. Then on the back, finally, you've just got your... It's just your, your decals, really. Uh, markings and colour call-outs uh, explaining the quite a lot of paints required for this one, it's quite a wide variety of greys and whites and blacks uh, and it shows the three versions there, the three different decal sets uh, all very clearly done really, it's very straightforward I think fold that back up nicely for Gary, there we go sir, nicely done right, that is sorted let's get into the plastic where do we go first, well I think we're going to go with these parts that are separate which is the uh, this is what happened a bit Gary. If you see me reach for the glue, you, you must shout at the screen and stop me because this is what was happening. I see things detached. I was not glue them together. But here we go. Now I wanted to do that for one very good reason. I just want to show the quality of the fit, really. Look at that. I mean, alright, there's a little bit there bare from I just need to clean up, but look at the look where the aerials are. Uh, I have to say that this is a classic matchbox. Excellent fit, really good join. You know, underneath an excellent join. This is 1979 we're talking about here, but look at it. No big steps. Very, very flush fitting. Absolutely smashing, you know. Really, really nice. So, again, it's kind of what we've come to expect, isn't it? You know, I have to say that's a very, very good start indeed. So, what other delights has it got for us? Well, we've got these sections that I said were a bit like the formal fuel tanks. I think they go here. Is it there? Is it like that or like that? I'm not sure. I think it's like that. I think. Can't be right, can it? <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I didn't follow the instructions properly, but something like that anyway. It must be there because the wing, yeah, it's there, isn't it? For the wing too. I think it's the other way around. I think it goes like that. No, it can't. Doesn't matter. Just show my ignorance. <laughs> I'm going to check that out. It's kind of bugging. Let's have a look. Which way does it go? Ah, the cutout goes under the wing. Oh, okay. I had it the wrong way around. So the cutout, it goes like that, in fact. That's it. That way. Got it. There we go. There we go. It goes like that, underneath the wing. I'll zoom you so you can see this a bit better. Actually, it's quite, quite well designed, I think. So... Goes like so, like that. Yep. Again, 
no no flash no filth no nonsense just a really nice uh, finish a little bit simplistic obviously the uh, the panel lines are well okay let's be critical come on I'll just take my matchbox hat off for a second people say that the panel lines are like trenches well they're right aren't they I suppose because those are quite trench like they're very very big you could say unnecessarily so yeah okay but but but, but you know yeah. what do you want you want beautiful panel lines and riveting but it won't go together and it's covered in flash and it's warped because those are the sort of things that we were getting in 1979 wasn't good you've seen some of the horrors from <laughs> from frog no no offense to any of the guys that sent me their frog kits but you've seen some of the horrors from the likes of frog and airfix uh, around this time they were not great you know um matchbox had their way and they had panel lines that weren't very fine true but it was beautifully finished and you didn't need to clean it up and especially if you're a youngster you know you're not really interested in being a builder you know some hero that can overcome all obstacles no that is not what you wanted you wanted something like this that looked right okay N not to scale some of the panel lines perhaps but they were there and they were clean and you could throw it together you didn't have to cut off any flash and you ended up with a really nice looking model and that's what is the magic of Matchbox at the end of the day and it's all here in spades you can see it so I'm going to confuse you because of all this stuff that's in the foreground I'm just going to move those carefully over there and bring you in a bit because I'm sort of rambling a bit <laughs> carried away with my nostalgia again <laughs> Here we are. So here's the, uh, this is this sort of pusey sprue which has got these the twin cockpits in and you've got the sort of central bar between the two cockpits here and those are the intake plates I mentioned, uh, aero plates for the air intakes and you've got a couple of uh, gear doors and things there and that's really that sprue. So moving on, this is going to be a difficult one because it's white so I've got to warn you, it probably won't come out so well the white spread. Here we go. Uh, so we've got basically the in wing in boards, and again we've got these trenchy panel lines, but but they're not that bad, you know. And once you've painted them up, I think if you paint them, they don't look as trench-like anyway. Uh, you know, the the width of them sort of shrinks once they're painted a bit. Here's your jammer pods, which look pretty cool, complete with their little propellers for the ram air turbine to drive the. Uh, compressor generator I should say uh, so you've got a whole load of these um, these jammer pods there's four in total of course and they're, they're in halves I'll bet you they go together like a dream that they do then you've got your tail planes here which has actually got raised panel lines on it I'm not sure if that's correct or not I'm not an expert on prowlers or, or intruders if I'm honest Nicely done here though with the engine exits I think, it's quite nicely done, although they are blocked which was very much the style I'm afraid by a matchbox, they didn't have them open. They didn't have slide moulding then. Here's our crew of four, so that leaves you with no doubt how many guys are in it. Um, and you've got your engine intakes then you've got your outer wings here. And obviously if you have them folded then uh, you have them up or you can have them out. I'd be very tempted to have it half and half. Uh, it's a shame that it didn't have them actually physically foldable, isn't it? Uh, you know, as an action. Like, like they did on my Corsair. The uh, Corsair 2. They actually fold up and fold down. Not that well, if I'm honest, but... Yeah, it would be nice to have to have the option to have them, you know, either or and be able to change them depending on how you're displaying it, you know. But look at the sprue, you know, there's no flash on it at all. <laughs> Nothing. Not a sausage of flash on there. Um, it's solid. The parts on Matchbox were usually, they were, you know, the sprues were well designed to be rugged. They didn't just flake off and fall off straight away. Yes, there are a couple off the sprue, we don't know why that is. Uh, I know Gary's only just acquired this, so it's very possible that somebody's been a bit rough with it in the past, we don't know. Then we've got the ubiquitous and much missed Matchbox stand, which we all love so much. We loved, loved them at the time, we'd love to see them back. 
quite why Ravel can't do these. I have no idea. You know, they've got that new uh, Strike Eagle has come out. I'm sure it won't have a stand with it, sadly. But aren't they lovely? You know, this is quite a nice example. It's the big one. Tell by the size of my hand how big it is. It's a chunky old stand, is that? Really good. That's very nice. Then we have the, the canopy clear parts. So that is the rear fusel. Uh, that's sorry, the rear. No, it's not. No, that's the front one. Sorry, this is the front canopy. Uh, there's a few scratches on this, but that's not. I don't think that's the moulding process. I think it's just in transit again. Prior to Gary getting this, I think it's been shaken around a bit. Uh, that's the rear. This is slightly slimmer in profile. It's a bit slimmy. You can see it tapers back. So that's the rear for the electronic warfare officers at the back. And then we've got this one that's come off, which is the windscreen, which is here, which is actually very nice. Nice, they're almost beautifully clear. Um, I don't mean crystal, they're quite thick, the matchbox canopies, but they're always bright and crisp and clear looking, you know. Um, they may not be the most scale-like in terms of their thickness, but they are very, very clean and nice, you know, always good. So that's that one, and that just leaves us with one last sprue. So I'm a bit sad that we're coming to the end of this one because I've been enjoying it so much. And this is this pale grey, so now we've got the top of the inboard sections of the wing, which is here. And panel lines seem a little bit better on this, I would say. Can you see that? I'd say they're a little bit nicer, a little bit crisper than they are on the fuselage, for example. And then you've got your... Um, just wondering what this is. I'm sure the experts amongst you will know. This is like, it's not a Peter, it's too big. I think it's like a receiver. It's probably a transmitter or basically an aerial uh, for the actual um, jamming pod. I'm sure that's some sort of transmitter aerial because it's too chunky to be anything else like a Peter head. Then you've got your very chunky looking arrestor hook. Very chunky looking indeed. Hmm. Not sure how scale like that is. And then we've got some tanks here. Which are very nice, very simple. There's no panel lines on them at all. And then we've got the top side again of the outer wing tips. Outer wing section. And again, I think that's a little bit nicer, the panel lining, than the, than the fuselage. Which, yeah, I think that's quite nicely done. Look at that. That looks more scale-like. I think they've just gone a bit OTT with the fuselage, haven't they? That's all. Um, and these are these. Uh, this one is still on the sprue. This is the um, the pivot uh, of the uh, or the hinge, I should say, for the wing for when it folds up. And you've got your gear. And again, look at these fine parts. You know, there's no no flush on them. Very very nicely moulded. They, they look really exquisite actually, for Matchbox. Those are some of the nicest gear legs I've seen them do, to be honest. Very, very nice. You've got your wheels, uh, wheels and tyres over here. Um, that's basically it, folks, I guess. That's got a couple, of, uh, a couple more legs and there's a couple more pylons here. So there we have it. Well, I am having to say uh, negatives, first of all. Don't worry, Gary, there aren't many at all. <laughs> the only negatives, really, are, um, as I said, the rather trenchy-like uh, panel line. They're going way over the top there on that fuselage, and yet on the wings it looks really spot-on to me. I think they've just got a bit carried away, somebody, <laughs> with the, uh, the way they designed the mould. You know, it's a bit too much, really. But the shape looks really nice. There's no flash, there's no, I don't think you have any issues with it going together whatsoever. And the only other criticism is just the way that they laid out the, um, they didn't put the number of crew in it, which is kind of unusual, especially on an aircraft like that. And they, they put the colour plan in a slightly odd place, it wasn't very clearly marked. So I'm going to just knock off half. I think I'm going to give it nine and a half. Oh, well, hang on a second. I don't like the way they did the artwork. Nine and a quarter. Oh, I'm splitting hairs, aren't I? I think nine's a bit harsh on it. Nine and a half props a bit too generous. I think you probably agree with me. 
Um, they messed up the artwork. Why do you have to play around with it like that and cram it in like that? It's almost like you in your face, you know, very strange. But it's a very nice kit, it really is. And I think it'll build up no problem whatsoever. Uh, I do, you know, I'm complaining about the artwork, but they did a brilliant job on the back. You know, they've utilised the space much better than normal, showing the whole plane nice and big, but at least it's all on there, not like on the front where they've cropped it up. So overall, I think I'm going to say 9.25 out of 10. Nine and a quarter out of 10. Anyway, I hope you found it interesting. It's a model I've never seen before. I have to say, if I came across one at a nice price, I would probably buy one of these because I think it's a nice kit. It'd be nice to have that in my collection. Um, I'm sure I've got this feeling though that I've seen it with different box art. I wonder if that is the Mark One box or not. Sometimes they used to say on the flap, uh, which doesn't. No, there's no clue really. There's no clue. I think maybe I'll have a quick look on scale mates. That if it's any of you are looking at scale mates now, just shout up in the chat and we'll uh, we'll know. Is that the absolute first edition of the box art? I'm not convinced it is. I thought it was in a slightly more normal perspective, slightly but moved back a bit. That's probably why it's bugging me so much because I think I've seen, I've got an image in my mind that I've seen that same artwork done differently. Anyway, we're not going to split hairs. Nine and a quarter out of ten for a a kit that is what's that 43 years old that's not bad going to be honest so um, thank you very much to Gary Hyder for very generously and trustingly loaning it to us um, we'll make sure it's very carefully put back exactly as it was uh, with all the bubble wrap and it'll be uh, nice and safe for transit uh, and it came in a very stout box so it should be okay Thanks to, those. Thanks to Gary, I think we all owe you a beer. Um, great to see a kit from Matchbox that we haven't seen before, and it is a lovely kit, so there you go. 9.25 out of 10. Hope you give me a 10 out of 10 and smash that like button. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already and you want to see more of these, um, if anybody else has got any more that I haven't seen, there's still plenty I haven't seen. I haven't seen a Tiger Moth, um, Puma Helicopter, um, trying to think now, the Heinkel... Is it the 118, the, the seaplane? I haven't, seen, I haven't had that one. There's plenty, there's plenty. Shout up if you've got anything interesting. And I'll, any that I notice I haven't had, I'll tell you. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, hope to see you again very, very soon. Thank you for all your time. Stay well, stay safe. Thanks a lot. And bye for now.